And so last, we have uh, David Van Tassel, who is going to uh, enlighten us about our oil seed project here. Uh, David. Thank you, Tim. So, uh, Tim just said I work on the oil seeds, and so I guess that makes me a, a, an oil man. <laughs> and, um, you know, the oil men talk about black gold, right? Um, and so, so those of you who have been here before can probably guess what I'm about to show you, uh, something that's actually gold. That's what you guessed, right? Flowers, yeah. But I'm going to show you something else that's gold. Uh, and this is oil from uh, perennial sunflowers that uh, for the first time we pressed this in a regular commercial oilseed press and that was done up in uh, Organic Valley's uh, mobile oil factory in Wisconsin. Uh, and so uh, for some reason I, I've, I've known for many years of course that I'm working on oil seeds and that these seeds have a lot of oil but <laughs> somehow I, you know I'd never seen it actually. And, <laughs> It was really uh, exciting to actually see oil coming out of these seeds. Um, and speaking of, uh, of Organic Valley, and, uh, and gold uh, makes me think of coal because uh, uh, Organic Valley is up in, in Wisconsin. And uh, our, my collaborator up there, Nicole Spinelli, uh, and I planted uh, a lot of, of, of silphium and a perennial uh, stiff sunflower at one of their locations. Now they had about uh, 40 days of below zero Fahrenheit weather in a row at that location last winter. And so I thought, oh, all the Kansas adapted material that, I, that we hauled up there and transplanted will not make it. But it was virtually 100% survival. So that was, yeah. It sounds good, but it kind of wrecked my plans because I'd expected about 1% to live, and that those would be the 1% we would cross, and then we'd, you know. So now we had to think of something else to do with all those plants. Right? <laughs> so thinking of cold also makes me uh, think of other things up in the north. And uh, because we've had some extra seeds, we've been able to send some seeds to our collaborator, uh, Brent Hulkey, at the USDA uh, Northern Plains uh, Research uh, Facility. And so he's been analyzing uh, not exactly this oil, but the silphium oil, which Tim had mentioned earlier. Silphium is the, the, our sort of number one oil seed right now. And the good news is that the oil of silphium has almost exactly the same composition as oil from uh, regular annual sunflower. And, and, and annual sunflower is considered to have a pretty, you know, decent, be a pretty high quality oil. So that was very encouraging that there was no sign of any of the, there's a few toxic uh, fatty acids that can be found in some crops. Um, there was no sign of those, and um, overall it looks, it looks really good, and it, and it actually tastes very similar to, to um, well, the stiff sunflower tastes very similar to regular sunflower oil. So since I'm thinking of things in the north, uh, that reminds me of things in the south. Um, so... Unlike some of these other crops, we've never grown silphium outside of this country. But in uh, February, I'll be taking seeds of silphium down to Uruguay in South America, where uh, a former Land Institute fellow, Valentin Picasso, uh, has invited us to come and set up a new breeding um, experiment, at least to, to see if it'll survive there. We've never grown this in, a, in an area. It's not quite in the subtropics, but it's close to it. They, for example, they don't have any months where the average temperature is below uh, freezing, although they do get some frost. But, so that's quite a different environment, although Uruguay is sort of the Kansas of South America, I think, because it's sort of flat and uh, grassy, and they don't get many tourists and that kind of thing. <laughs> but it is located on the, uh, on the Rio del Plata. Plata uh, that's where Montevideo is. And so that makes me think of the Platte River. Um, <laughs> back here in, in Nebraska, which makes me think of, in general, the Midwest and Great Plains, the central states. And 
Some of you may be involved in this. I put out a, a request on, e on email uh, last fall for anyone who knew of any silphium growing near them because I wanted to really expand the genetic uh, base of the silphium. Did anyone here who's here send me seed? No? Wow, these were... I thought someone would be here because I got, I got seed from... I was really quite overwhelmed by the response. I got seed from 42 different locations in 12 states, ranging from Minnesota to Texas, and uh, 10 different altogether, by the time I had um, bought some from seed companies too, 10 different silphium species. And amazingly, all the seed that came in, only about one or two samples were not silphium, and I was expecting about three quarters of them to be <laughs> something that just sort of looked like a sunflower in general, but wasn't. So these were really savvy uh, people who collected Anyway, if any of you were out there and did that and just didn't put your hands up, thank you. <laughs> and uh, that reminds me of something we did similarly recently. Uh, Ken Baker um, uh, went out and collected a species called Retibita uh, for, for Wes Jackson and me. We're trying to evaluate that as a new potential oil seed from the, uh, that's native to, to the Great Plains also. And retibita, unfortunately, whenever you look at that word, you see the word rat in it, um, which makes you, me think of pests. Um, and, I, and that reminds me of uh, a, uh, a conference call we had just, just the other day. Um, no, no, it's very good. With, with the, the K, K, Kansas State University Entomology Department, um, of course, they deal with insect pests of crops. And they are interested in looking at silphium uh, as a host for, for uh, beneficial insects, uh, talking about trying to plant them sort of on the edges of fields, such as sorghum fields, um, because they flower early in the season and so provide floral resources like pollen and nectar to, um, to things like ladybugs, lacewings, and um, some of the ground beetles. Uh, well, I don't know if they eat the pollen or not, but, but they live in in habitat that uh, is harder to find in, in monocultures of other grains. Uh, um, so soil reminds me of toil. Um, <laughs> and that reminds me that we are actually looking for a new technician to help with the uh, su sunflower and sorghum, perennial sorghum project. So if anyone knows of someone with, preferably with a master's degree or uh, similar kind of experience in research, uh, have them contact us. And, of course, toil then reminds me of oil, so that brings us full circle. Um, so to review, in case you didn't catch that, um, in summary, oil, black, gold, cold, north, south, plata, plat, rat, pest, soil, toil, oil. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>